gospel of Luke. Chapter 2. The gospel of Luke, chapter 2. Who convicts, 
who convinces, who is the persuader of truth, will reveal the truth about the power and the integrity of your word to every listener. And God, I pray right now in Jesus' name that your words will be helpful to our bodies, strength to our hearts, renewal to our minds. We give you thanks, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. God bless you, as you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Expect great things. This is it, beloved. This is it. This is it. This is the moment that you are to get your mind ready to receive all that God has in store for you in 2019. This is it. Whatever you were unable to do, achieve, or accomplish, you now have a new sheet of paper, and it's all on you. My job is simple today. I am to declare and agree that you are to expect great things. When 2019 rolls in here in some 37 hours from now, you are to expect great things, and you are to walk. In greater. The New Testament writer teaches us in 1 John chapter 4 and verse 4, little children, you are from God and have a conquered them. For the one who is in you is greater. Somebody shout greater. Greater than the one who is in the world. Look at your neighbor right now and tell your neighbor, I have greater in me. Look across the room and look at somebody and say, I have greater in me. Our periphery, our selected portion of the sacred text for examination is housed in the gospel of Luke. The looking of Jesus is compassionate and a friend to the outcast. Luke attempts to show the unfolding of God's redemptive purpose in human history by relating Jesus to the history of Israel, the scripture, and contemporary world history. Luke therefore desires that the reader sees Jesus as the Savior that was sent to seek and save the lost. Our text, our text indicates that that in the vicinity of where the writer records the birth of Jesus, there were shepherds living in the fields. It is important for the modern reader to know and understand that shepherding was a despised occupation in the first century. Our text indicates that these despised brothers were visited by an angelic being that delivered a message of good news. Somebody shout good news. It is important for the modern reader, Susan, to know and understand that good news in the first century meant victory. Somebody shout victory. Our text indicates that, that angels gave the shepherds a word of victory. The text indicates that the word of victory announced that born to them this day in the city of David is a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. The text indicates that, that the confirmation of the revelation would be in a child laying in a feeding trough. The text indicates that the shepherds departed on foot in search of that good news and expected something great. Please come and sit with me as I lay forth the prophetic truth of the text as I see them. Are y'all ready to get on the train? You see, the text teaches us First of all, watch for it. Look at your neighbor right now and say, neighbor, oh neighbor, watch for it. Look, 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 look at what the text teaches us. C.D. Brown in the B clause of first of eight. This is the new revised. And the first it says, keeping watch over their flock by night. Beloved, in order to expect great things, Director Harmon, in 2019, one must constantly be looking for it. Beloved, dislodge yourself from the notion that things will just fall out of the sky. The primary job of the shepherds were to watch. That was their job. Beloved, your job in 2019 is to watch as well. You must be looking. You, you must be watching. You, you must be alert. Don't get distracted by the foolishness of the enemy. Look at your neighbor and say, 
neighbor. Oh, neighbor, don't get distracted by the foolishness of the enemy. Don't get distracted by your own pains and dilemmas. Oh, my kid, often, often we walk around driving along. Uh, I, I will see something, Kita, uh, that I think is worth noting. I will ask him if he saw it, and, and his response most times, Kita, is no. And I, I, then I scratch my head and I'm trying to figure out why is it that your little brother didn't see what I saw? Could it be, my Kita, because he had other things via a game, via a DVD, via a tablet, etc., that, that he was that was holding? Beloved, so many times in our lives we miss what God is doing because we've been as distracted by the foolishness of life. There are other things that have been holding our attention instead of keeping our focus on God. Look at your neighbor right now and tell your neighbor to watch for it. Look at him again and tell him to watch for it. Oh, beloved, don't miss what God has for you because you're not looking for the move of God. Be alert this coming season because the Psalter teaches us in Psalm 34 and 8, Dr. Tammy, oh, taste and see. Do I have a witness anywhere? That the Lord is good. Not only must we try, Miss Gwen, uh, my, not only must we try God, but we are to look for God. Somebody say, I'm looking for God. But love it, you need to look for the sign of God. You, you need to look for the move of God. You need to look for the reign of God. You need to look for the wave of God. You need to look for it. Look to the hills. From where does your help come? It comes from God. Each and every day that you set foot out of your bed, you need to open your prayer line with a request that God help you to see what you don't want to see. Do I have a witness in here? When you step foot on the floor and you feel the coldness of your heart went forth,
Do I have a witness in here? Oh, God is with you. But down there, the text teaches us something else. The text teaches us something else. You can't expect great things because God will bring us victory. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. God will bring you victory. Look at what the text teaches. Look at what the text teaches, bird. In verse 10, this is a new revised standard version. It says, do not be afraid. Somebody ought to catch that right here. Do not be afraid. For, see, I am bringing you good news. Somebody shout good news. I'm bringing you good news of great joy for all people. Once again, please allow me to remind you that good news in the first century meant victory. Somebody shout victory. The shepherds heard and received that God was bringing them victory. Somebody shout victory. Now catch it. Catch this key. Catch this. You are hereby commanded to expect great things because God will bring you victory in 2019. Do I have a witness in here? You are hereby expected. Uh, you are hereby commanded to expect Chandra great things because God will bring you victory in 2019. Can I help somebody today? Can I, can I help somebody today? Let me, let me see if I can help somebody. Whatever the battle, whatever battle that is going on in your life right now, whatever war you are fighting right now, you must cease being afraid because in order to receive victory, you have to believe that you can win it. Repeat after me. In order for me to receive victory, I have to believe that I can win. Do I have a witness in here? You see, beloved, I've discovered that God has a difficult time speaking victory to fearful lives. Do I have a witness in here? Stop being afraid of the power. Stop being afraid of the fight. Stop being afraid of your shadow. Stop being afraid of tomorrow. Stop being afraid of your future. Stop being afraid of your past. Stop being afraid of trying. Stop being afraid of the enemy. Stop being afraid of the devil and all his end. Stop being afraid of failure. Because God, somebody shout God. God will bring you victory. Oh, come here and help me, Paul. I need your help right about now, Paul. Paul teaches us in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 57. But thanks be unto God, yes, which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody ought to claim the victory right now. Somebody ought to claim it for your family. Somebody ought to claim it for your marriage. Somebody ought to claim it for your household. Somebody ought to claim it for your career. Somebody ought to claim it for your health. Somebody ought to claim it for your mind. Somebody ought to claim it for your sins. Somebody ought to claim it for your wealth. Somebody ought to claim it for your promotion. Somebody ought to claim it for your business. Somebody ought to claim it for your community. Somebody ought to claim it for your joy. Somebody ought to claim it for your future. Somebody ought to claim it and receive it. Do I have a witness in here? Somebody ought to claim the victory right now. You've been in the fight. You might as well be in it to win it. You already in the struggle. You ought to be in it to win it. The devil's already called your name. You ought to be in it to win it. Do I have a witness in here that I'm going to win? Look at your neighbor right now and tell your neighbor I'm already winning. Look at your neighbor right now and tell your neighbor you can win no matter what is going on in your life. Is with him. God will bring us victory. But if you want to expect great things, if you want to expect great things, Dr. Jeffries, understand that God has faith in you. Look at your neighbor, say neighbor. Or neighbor, God has favored you. Look at 
but the text teaches us in the new clause of verse 14. This is the new revised standard version. Susan, it says, peace among those who he favors. Did you hear what I said? Don't read past it this morning. God came to the shepherds in their lowest form of employment in the first century, not only to give them victory, but to give them an assignment. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I have an assignment. Beloved, they went forth on their assignment, expecting great things to happen. God has favored you and anointed you to fulfill the assignment that God will birth in you. God has favored you and anointed you to fulfill God's purpose. God has favored you and anointed you as our doorkeepers to be the best doorkeepers that God has created. God has favored you and anointed you to be good stewards in the kingdom. God has favored and anointed you to be good voices in the choir. God has favored you and anointed you to be good trustees in the kingdom. God has favored and anointed you to expect great things in 2019. But I Do I have a witness to you?